Welcome back. This is your man, Warrior. This is another patron roster review. This is Momo Celia from FTB Shaved Wookies. FTB, they're a great alliance. So uh, Momo is mostly free to play. That means very, very little money has been spent in the game. And once you see the roster, you'll see that there's very little money invested into this roster. I've uh, been playing a little over 18 months and really asked for just regular arena, heroic AAT and dark side territory battles. Pretty simple straightforward i am going to go over both arena and ships didn't ask for ships but i'm going there anyway because i noticed that your fleet battles won after a year and a half is only 200 that tells me you're only doing about one or two battles a day really the minimum and looking at ships i notice you're like 1100 my guess is you're probably thinking i can't do any better it doesn't really matter why should i put any effort into it and i guess that comes down to why put any effort into any part of the game ever right so it's not something you have to put a ton of focus on but just a little bit of strategy goes a long way there's no reason why you can't be in the top 500 and the rewards go up drastically from where you're at to even the top 500 and i believe you can find yourself even in the top 100 if you really focus Focus. So really quickly on Arena, I notice your team and I see that you have Jin Urso as a lead. And I am guessing on offense, this probably is amazing because the defense doesn't really, the AI doesn't target certain characters at a certain time. And so you're able to bring back to life when they kill Chirrut or Baze and you've got CLS and R2 really there rocking it. So obviously first things first, my suggestion is you want to also have the appearance on defense that you have a very strong team and so you're not targeted when people are trying to attack you. I personally would move CLS into the leadership role and I would eventually Zeta binds all things which you do not have and then I would have R2D2 and Han Solo. That's right, five-star gear 11 Han Solo. Now you'll wanna finish his Omega on Never Tell Me The Odds and his Zeta on Shoots First. This is one of the singular best Zetas in the game. So definitely get the Zeta and Omega on Han Solo. This is gonna bring with CLS as a lead with R2D2 and Han craziness. Now Han Solo squishy, but with R2D2, he is much more durable and that's probably why you're not running him. But Han, as he is squishy, does still need R2-D2 and he needs his Zeta. Without the Zeta, he's less impressive for sure. So if I was going to, of the next two Zeta, suggest Han first and then it binds all things by CLS. Um, you already did R2-D2, both of him. And then for the back two slots, I would use your Chirrut and Baze. Now your Baze is pretty maxed out except for his mods and his gear is gear, I believe 10. And Chirrut is pretty maxed out for the most part, except for he is, uh, his mods need some work and he is gear 11. Uh, so, or gear nine, I apologize. So you're going to have to get your Chirrut and Bays from gear nine and 10 up to gear 11 for more durability for sure. Uh, but Chirrut and Bays are also going to bring durability to Han Solo. So you're going to have CLS as the lead. There's a ton of countering going on. Uh, Chirrut's going to bring a bunch of health over time. You know how this works. R2D2 brings durability to the whole team. Chase is there really for that durability with the tank and the healing and Han Solo and CLS are there to tear it up with R2-D2 doing burn and of course the stun that he brings. I think it would be a better team defensively when people are trying to fight you because the defense or the AI can't really mess up the team I'm suggesting and it also does far more damage in my opinion than the team that you currently have up. So you're going to have to uh, gear, finish gearing up Han Solo and Chirrut and Baze. Now, as far as ships go, I got two leads for you if you're interested. Both of them include your Executrix. Obviously, you're going to use your Executrix. Um, you're going to use Biggs, which you're already using. You're going to use the TIE Advance, which you're already using. And you're going to use Umbaran, which you're already using. But I would switch out those other two Jedi Consular ship and Cassian's ship for Biston's ship and Slave 1. Biston has a uh, target lock and he goes stealth and slave one has two different aoe's and has target lock and so for you there's target lock synergy if you bring in two more target lock ships get rid of cassian and get rid of the 
Jedi Consular ship, and that will give you more target lock synergy. And Bistin, while he's squishier, he is going to go stealth and probably stay alive. And Slave One's pretty tanky, even where you have him. As far as something to shoot for, a perfect world team, really, in the long run, if you really want to get serious, is Biggs, tie advanced like you have, and then switch out the whole right side, your your uh, Jedi Consular, your Cassian, and your Umbaran for First Order TIE Pilot, Imperial TIE Fighter, and the TIE Reaper. And you have the TIE Reaper four stars, and you do have both of the First Order TIE Fighter and the Imperial TIE Fighter with their pilots. And all three of those ships are decent in about middle of the ground. You could probably put them in and at 1100, you probably could climb even now with these teams. So this would be the best case scenario team if you really want to get serious. Biggs, TIE, Advanced, First Order TIE Fighter, the Imperial TIE Fighter, and TIE Reaper. In your backup, you could put some of the ships like the Scimitar, the TIE Silencer, if you ever level it up. You could use Poe Dameron's X-Wing in the backup, um, and, and Wedge's ship in the backup. Very cool ships in the backup. Plus, you even have Millennium Falcon you could use in the back lineup. Now, let's go ahead and get back to Hat, which is the next thing you actually wanted me to discuss. Now, to get the characters you need for the Heroic AAT, we're going to talk about the path of least resistance. We need certain characters to make the fewest amount of teams. Those fewest amount of teams are only going to require... Um, your eight resistance and three non-resistance, you're only gonna need about, um, you're only gonna need 10 characters. So eight resistance and two non-resistance, CLS and Thrawn. You already have your Thrawn and you've got your Phoenix high enough. You can make sure that you have a seven star Thrawn for this team, but you need to finish your first order. You've got three that are at six star. The next time BB-8 comes out, you need, it's a crux character. You've gotta have him. You need to be able to get him to seven stars or you can't use him in the heroic version of the AAT. And of course, Ray will be coming back in about four months. So of course, your veteran smugglers are both six stars. You're going to want to finish them off as well. So first order and the vets, I know that that feels like you're going the wrong direction for heroic AAT since in and of themselves, you probably won't use the first order or vets, but they will unlock BB-8 and Ray. And those are two extremely important characters for a very, very powerful team. Now, once you have those two characters within the next four months, you're gonna build two teams. You can throw anything at the first phase. You could use your Kylo Ren. You could use whatever you want, Jedi, whatever for phase one. You could put in a few hundred thousand damage. But when you get to phase two, right when it launches phase two, you can use resistance. Now, the resistance you're going to use together will be a Finn lead. You're going to have to Zeta his Finn lead, which you did. And then you're going to need Poe Dameron, Ray Scavenger, resistance trooper, and resistance pilot. Now, you're going to have to finish starring and gear these guys up now they can work at a lower gear level but obviously the higher the gear the faster they are the more durable they are and and the more damage that they do each time they take a turn so you're going to want to continue to develop this team completely out if hat is important to you and so all of the characters you see here except bb8 and r2d2 will be on one team now r2d2 bb8 ray and of course your Commander Luke Skywalker and your Grand Admiral Thrawn when he comes back and you get his seventh star. So within four months, you should be able to get the seventh star for Grand Admiral Thrawn. You should be able to get BB-8 to seven stars and you should be able to unlock Rey max six months maximum, but probably four months. The four months is going to fly by really fast, I promise you. So finish your first order, finish the vets, and then you're going to build two teams, the resistance for phase two. And then when that team dies after, you know, a few million, two to five million damage, you're going to then switch to your other hybrid team with Ray, R2D2, BB-8, Thrawn, and CLS. And you're going to do the rest of P2 from about 30% of P2 all the way through P3 and all the way through P4, at least half of P4. Pretty amazing team. I've ran it. And even where you have your characters, you should be able to do really, really well. Those are the two most efficient teams you can do phase through phase two through phase four and only have two teams. So really, I highly suggest this these two teams. And so focus on those first order and vets.
Now, the last thing you wanted to talk about was dark side territory battles, and you need dark side teams. Now, if you were to finish the first order, like I as mentioned, for BB-8, you will have the first order for the dark side territory battles. Now, the top five that you're developing work okay in dark side territory battles. They did add the first order executioner to really help this team, and in about three months, he'll be farmable. When he becomes farmable, you will be able to focus on him and him alone, because by that time, when he he comes free to play, you should have the rest of these first order leveled up a little bit higher and start up and ready to rock and roll. So this is one of many teams you should be able to utilize in the dark side territory battles. And again, the executioner can be added later to make this team even better. Like many people, I also suggest the Imperial Troopers for you. This is a lot of individuals, so you want to focus on one team first. I suggest First Order, that way you can get BB-8, and then you can then move to the Troopers and try to finish them off. The Imperial Troopers not only have a couple nodes required in Dark Side Territory Battles, but they're one of the most overpowered teams for Dark Side Territory Battles. They're really my go-to. I always use them, so get them up. And the last for Dark Side Territory Battles is Night Sisters. Now, a lot of the Night Sisters, uh, three of them specifically, the Spirit Zombie and Talzin, can't be used past a certain point because you don't have them seven star and it's going to take a long time to get these characters up since they're never going to officially go free to play they're always going to be event related and you're going to wait for that event over and over and over unless you're willing to pay to get them out of chromiums and i don't suggest that but the other five night sisters do have really good synergy you could run asajj as the leader with old daka there to bring them back to life talia initiate and acolyte the rework of all the night sisters made them really pretty good and they're going to work about as good as the first order and when they're done and if and when you ever do get the remaining stars on Talzin and some of the others you'll have them developed for the long term so i recommend night sisters but last i actually recommend like i said first order and then your imperial troopers and then night sisters work on them one at a time so hopefully momo Silla, this helps you with your ships arena with your regular arena with you know, what characters you should be really hyper-focused on for the heroic AAT, which teams you're going to have to focus on to get those characters, and what characters and teams you should be focused on the dark side territory battles. Remember, if you have any questions, talk to me private on Discord. I'd be happy to Discord with you and chat. And as always, keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.